study I have done on these uh, very important issues uh, in Asia and, and probably also a very important global impact. Uh, I'm Chang Chen Zhang from National Time University and next. Uh, I'm not going quite for a long time and uh, has a lot of uh, cooperation with uh, National Central Universities. So I was some of the papers I'm presenting today are jointly research between NTU and NC and National Songyang uh, Dao, right? Next. I'm currently next please. Yeah, professor in, in Institute of Occupational Medicine and Digital Hygiene at National Town University. Or probably I can do it by myself. Yes, and also uh, Director of Global Health Centers and Associate Dean of College of Health. Uh, this is dust storms worldwide, Asian dust storms, African dust storms, and they can affect, no, no, light on, please, light on, please. I think that's not good. This is, uh, so you can see this is, uh, currently there's a lot of study going on for African dust storms affecting uh, Europe. And uh, I have been doing this since 2002 on Asian dust storms, one of the pioneers in this area. So Asian dust storms come from the Gobi area. Currently, a very important place for mining, especially for Mongolia. So there's a lot of uh, global companies going there. Uh, but unfortunately, these origins of uh, Asian dust storms. And every year, they come through three waves, okay? The first one is goes through uh, Beijing, then go to uh, Seoul, or even further apart. Then, the other one, you know, this is North, North Road, Middle Road, and the last one goes through uh, Yangtze Rivers off the Yangtze rivers and came down to like uh, Hong Kong, Taiwan. So that's a natural phenomenon been with us for probably thousands of years. But this problem become uh, even more important <coughs> recently. So this is the origins of dust storms, okay? And when it hit Beijing, 2002, March, Somewhere around this time, right? So this year we have Beijing smoke. So ten years ago it has been like this already, but uh, not too much coverage. Of it. Even though this is from CNN, you can see this how it, they do it that time. And when it, it hit uh, Korea, this is uh, also from Professor Lin Nanhui's uh, photos. He took it and. This is how it happened in, in Korea. You know, Taiwan now is very afraid of Korea, South Korea, in terms of semiconductor manufacturing. But dust storm is good for Taiwan because at the time, when they have a dust storm, the d drains production has to be turned off because this PIPA filter is not enough to filter the paper. Then uh, our stuff jump up. Unfortunately, our bleaching has gone, right? So, <laughs> And this is local pollution on the left, right? Different color, you can tell. Different color of pollution. If you shoot from our national park, Yangmin Sun, then you can see the difference in air pollution. So, uh, it has public health impact. It also has economic impacts, what I want to say. So, this, since 1999, there's a lot of uh, studies going on to try to document public health impact of Asian dust storms. And I started in 2002 under the sponsorship of Taiwan EPA. And I think it's a great region to do that. No, nobody cared about that at the time. So, I organized a team. And this is the first one. We put these uh, hypertensive rates with my colleagues. Professor Zheng Zhenzhen and his doctoral students, and these two professors are from Zhongyang University. I put this one in Zhongli to catch the first dust storm ever be done in Taiwan to see how the rates respond to the dust from China. So 
for this uh, the first animal study done. The next one, we look at this uh, whether custom will make people sick and sick enough to seek emergency care. So we use the uh, uh, National Town University hospital data and cooperate with, again, Li Chongde from Dongyang University. And we uh, work together to document this uh, um, first uh, human tragedies of uh, public health uh, impacts by the dust storms. So how did we do that? You know, all these uh, environmental study, uh, as uh, Professor Norris, Norris has, has mentioned, it has to be multidisciplinary. So you have to have a meteorologist to collect all these ground observation data, including China. At that time, we asked professors from uh, uh, Kachou University and tried to negotiate with China to get some uh, information they will not give us at the time. So we had this ground level uh, observation that we also used for forward satellite tracking, try to document every instance of these uh, dust storms coming from uh, Gobi area. And we use a uh, backtrack, backward trajectory analysis, try to, to, to quantify this uh, pathway. So it, you need to use data from NOAA, okay? And I cannot do that. I have to have a meteorologist to help me. And we have a, a lot of particular measurement at that time in Taiwan, so we can quantify, like PM10, particle meters, particular meters uh, less than 10 micrometers uh, to quantify this uh, event. And we extract electronic medical records from National Taiwan University Hospital, particularly look at the heart disease, stroke, and COPD, three main targets of health by pollution. Okay. So this is, uh, and then we have to use uh, all kinds of statistical uh, methods, try to piece out, as uh, you can see from the previous presenters. When we are talking of the, about this environmental change, we're talking about time series. We always have time series data, and you have to piece out and try to make sense of that. And uh, we did it. So uh, there's some uh, simple test and a Poisson uh, regression model we can use. So this is the kind of uh, monitoring we have. So hospital here, and we have all these monitoring stations. And I want to mention SuperSight. It's a great one of the great uh, monitoring stations we, we established in Asia. A lot of Asian countries are following us. This is also a cooperation between me and the Professor Li Chongde under the sponsorship of uh, Taiwan EPA. And it's a great achievement to, 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 to find out the uh, impact of the regional air pollution. So I have 39 high dust events and 46 low dust men. You know, dust came about 4,000 kilometers from western part of China. And when it reached Taiwan, there's two possibilities. It affected Taiwan. The other one is because the region, our local uh, meteorological conditions, sometimes there's a shower. So all the dust was washed out. So you, have, you will have high dust event, low dust event. In previous study, a lot of people cannot piece out this kind of difference, so they cannot see the impact of public health. So, uh, my study just uh, shows that only high dust event you can see, you can have this uh, impact. So the purple one are high dust events, and uh, you can tell from this measurement it all coincident with our highest PM10 measurement in Taiwan, in Taipei. Okay. So, uh, for those uh, 39 high dust events, we can calculate the areas of the air mass uh, travels in China. So, it's passing the high, heaviest industrialized areas in China. So, all the way, these uh, air mass 
uh, pick up a lot of pollutants in addition to the original dust and to Taiwan. Okay. And uh, we use the super side data to see this uh, increase of particle between 1 to 10 micrometers uh, associated with high dust event. This is another way to show before, during, and after. You see the size distribution of particles, aerosols, will be changed by this uh, dust event. And I use uh, international uh, classification of disease to quantify all these diseases. I will skip it. So this is a high dust event. You see this particles, significant difference. The rest of the pollutants remain the same. So it has to be from the dust. And disease, cardiovascular diseases increase. So in the Taipei city, Taipei city citizens who are who has already uh, had been illness of cardiovascular diseases will be affected by dust event and make them to seek emergency care in our hospital. Okay. If you look at the low dust event, no difference in PM10 and no difference in uh, diseases. Okay. So this is, uh, and I can use more sophisticated uh, 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 statistical method to quantify this and still <coughs> got the same. So my conclusion is Asian dust of increasing increased emergency visits for cardiopulmonary disease during storm affecting period in Taipei when PM10 concentration above 90 microgram in a unit. And compared to the pre-dust periods, you know, you are talking about 35% or 20% increase in emergency visit for these uh, uh, pollutions. Okay? So um, this is uh, very important. So 90 microgram per cubic meters and 20 to 30% increase in morbidity. So after several years, people ask me, will Asian dust not only make people sick, Will they kill people? So I uh, dig out for six, 14 years data in Taipei, try to quantify how Asian dust storm kill people. So um, it takes a long time to do that. I won't go through this. I get the Taiwan EPA's uh, operated the data and uh, quantify the mortality data from uh, our uh, government and uh, data source. and. Uh, you know, we use, uh, we call time straight by case, uh, case crossover designs and use conditional logistic regression model try to quantify this. I, won't, I will skip that. So if you look at this graph over the 14 years, highest concentrations of PM10 always coincided with Asian dust storms in Taipei. The red dot Asian dust storm and the blue lines are PM10 measurement. So that's... Uh, not a coincidence, right? So uh, we look at the thir around 33,000 steps and try to quantify how they, uh, are, their deaths are related to our environmental change. And uh, we look specifically with elderly people, age above 65, and try to see whether there's a gender difference. Okay? So pollution sometimes uh, has different effects on different uh, genders. That's uh, very intriguing. And this is what uh, we call uh, Asian dust on day, non dust on days. And if you look at this, 85, around 50, or PN 2.5, 44, and versus 31. You can see this is dust on days has high pollution. That's the message. Then you look at uh, we uh, the epidemiological analysis to see this uh, mortality. I will uh, skip this. And uh, you also look at this OH, see? And male, female. No, very strange. Or not strange that 
Taiwanese males are more susceptible to Asian dust storm. European studies show that European women are more susceptible to African dust. So regional studies are important to show why there's difference. There should be some reason to explain that. And older people, definitely. See? Age above 65, higher than, than uh, eight, all ages. Okay. So this study provides the first evidence that a few exposed to long range <coughs> and short region dust can increase the number of non extendos and cardiovascular deaths for people aged about 65 in downwind area, 4,000 kilometers downwind area from dust. And there was 0.8% increase for 10 microgram per human increase in PM10. 2.5% increase of death mortality for a 10 microgram per human increase of PM2.5. And PM2.5 is one of the leading environmental issues now everywhere, especially in China. So this is very important. So every year that we have about 16 Asian dust storms reaching Taipei. Okay? And then there will, uh, there will be a 16 uh, days per, per uh, event, 14 to 16 event. So it makes up, you know, about 400 per year. So over the 14 years, it's about 5,000 excess deaths due to Asian dust. So in this kind of uh, evidence base, scientists can provide, lay down the foundation that what we can talk about in the future. Okay? And we cannot see excess respiratory deaths. Okay, so only cardiovascular deaths are increased by Asian dust. So, uh, what in the Asian dust storm? We dig out more bacteria, fungi, uh, increase when they reach here. So the impact could not be just public health, it could be ecological. It could affect our farming. So this is uh, a study we published with uh, Professor Zhao Xin from Taipei Medical University. And how about virus? So we also see some of uh, virus increase. Imagine it. that uh, virus can be there for such a long time and still alive, reaching Taiwan. So when uh, I listened to the previous talk, talk about this uh, humankind, this uh, the ear is the prepare for global change, and the virus and bacteria are very, very now active in uh, facing this global change. And we document that. So this is uh, one of the uh, information tell us it's not only physical, chemical, probably biological, related to the Asian dust storm. So this is the uh, background, but how it happened? Why after 2000, there are so many uh, pollution episodes that has not been uh, uh, reported before. And I trace back 1994, China has a land use policy. If you want to use more farmland in the coastal area, you have to, you know, invest in the inland land, try to do this uh, trade-off. The result, we'll see coastal province pay to put marginal land in interior into production. So those areas should not be used for production. But the pilots encourage it. And where is the policy from? Where is the policy from? From Korea, Japan, China, and, and Taiwan. We invest a lot in China, right? So we develop this area and put a lot of pressures on use of natural resource here. Then we put pressures in inland China. But gas is fair, right? They generate dust storm and flew back to kill us. 
So pollution has no boundaries. Okay? So who are responsible? Are farmers in China responsible? Or businessmen in Taiwan, Japan, and Korea are responsible? So there's a, a lot of things we have to do. Climate change. Why we should care about trans specific transformation? Done? Climate change, visibility, you know, economy, pollution, and public health. But look at that. London smoke, 50s, 60s. Yokaichi smoke, 60s in Japan. Los Angeles smoke, 60s. And since 2000s, Beijing smoke, and most severe this year. Why? Urbanization, industrialization, motorization, and globalization. And this is 1962, London, this kind. Pollution with death. And you can change it. 2011, 2020, Beijing, and probably next time, Mumbai, Jakarta, will repeat this human tragedy. We would allow this to continue in the future. So why air pollution remains an important environmental issue in Asian countries? I lay out urbanization, industrialization, motorization, and maximization of trade and profit, and marginalization of environmental issues. Especially these two issues are very important now because our governments are troubled by low GDP, and they, the new premier only for stress economy. Never mention about environment. Are we creating the next strategy for ourselves or for our next generations? So anytime when people are talking about maximization of profits, you have got to be watchful. There could be an environmental tragedies along with. And Beijing's move told us a lot. So what can we do? I promote a PN two point standards uh, using WHO's goals. Annual average, 10. Daily average, 25. Then we have, a, we have to start have some environmental treaties among Asian countries, especially transboundary pollution treaties. Okay. We have to promote a sustainable economy, promote green energy economy and consumption, reduce energy and pollution intensive industries everywhere, not just in Taiwan. And lastly, we still need studies, right? We're talking about science-based, evidence-based. So I promote to have Asian aerosol characterization and public health studies that we can, uh, in the future, have more sound environmental policy. That's it. Thank you.